So I came across this article in the Times of Israel um, called Rashi Was Right, Machine Learning Confirms Unique Status of Some Talmudic Tracts. And there's a superscripted title above it that says Aramaic is a complex collection of various dialects. And I'm um, doing a couple comments here for you guys just to talk about Aramaic dialect. I don't know that there's much substance to the article itself. Um, in a way, it's kind of obvious. There's another study done by uh, oh, some some group funded an um, American project um, similar to this, and it had to do with you know different different dialects of a Semitic language. And uh, basically what scholars can explain through features of dialects, the machine can confirm <laughs> through just cataloging um, you know, the, the differences between systems or, or language writing systems. And so that's kind of what this is doing here. Um, this is basically looking at how, you know, a machine algorithm was able to, um, go through the Talmud and, and distinguish uh, the Jerusalem and um, Babylonian Talmud and their different Aramaic dialects from one another. And then, you know, places where one would expect it to be um, in, in, let's say, the Babylonian Talmud, there'd be portions of it that feature the Jerusalemite um, Aramaic, right? So all that to say, I mean, maybe if you don't know better, it's interesting, but um, if you know the languages, you can tell, right? And so I think, that's probably what's interesting, uh, or that's why this is something that would become an article, uh, is because if you don't know the differences, well, the machine can help you uh, parse that out. Um, people don't know the Hebrew Bible has different dialects of Hebrew in it, and you could probably use the same sort of methodology to show where, you know, uh, archaic biblical Hebrew differs from standard biblical Hebrew, differs from Israeli and Hebrew, differs from... Uh, late biblical Hebrew, etc. So anyway, I'm not going to read the whole article, but I'm going to look at some pieces of it. If you want to read the article, you can go ahead in the description and follow it there. Uh, so basically, it, it talks about these special tractates that were um, featured in the Talmud and how uh, the rabbinical commentators effectively would say, well, this is, you know, this is a different type of Aramaic, right? Okay, well, that's a little obvious. Um, let's read some of the comments about Aramaic uh, that the article discusses. It says, Aramaic, the ancient Semitic language, was the lingua franca of the Levant during the time of the Second Temple, survives as a spoken language among few Neo-Aramaic speakers, as a written language in the liturgy of the Syriac Church, and in the Jewish world, largely due to its use in the Talmud. It is far more diverse than most people realize. Zebrzezhny says, okay, so uh, that's right. It is pretty diverse. It's an umbrella term, um, but maybe in the way that English is diverse, right? You have English as spoken in North America, which is almost uniform. Um, the, the spoken form is, um, it's distinguishable. You can hear people with a Canadian accent, then you can hear people with different regional accents from the United States. Um, spelling wise, it's pretty much the same. However, the Canadian uh, system still uses the same conventions as we would see um, in Great Britain. So British English, if you if you're aware of um, the way the language is spoken in Britain, it sounds kind of wildly different in a lot of different places in such a small land area. Um, and that's not even to include, you know, how it's spoken in, in places like Scotland or Wales or you know, any other place impacted Ireland, right? A place that speaks English. Um, every region, Australia, New Zealand, even India, India has Indian English. In fact, if you go into your different computer settings, you may find Indian English listed among the languages there, right? So uh, places where English has become an official language have their own conventions and use of English. Um, sometimes they are uh, the same but spelled differently. Other times they're spelled differently, but um, they're the same, you know, in, in spoken terms, as we've discussed. Look, English is pretty diverse. It's hard to understand people from some remote regions. I mean, if you listen to Tangier Island versus, you know, someone from, I don't know, you, know, you pick it, 
um, you know, California, California versus Tangier Island. Those are both places in the United States. One's on the East Coast, the other's on the West Coast. It's kind of tough to figure out, right? And they'll have uh, idioms, you know, in the local accent that we're not familiar with, you know, on the West Coast and vice versa. Sometimes the West Coast will use a definite article, like in Southern California, use a definite article before a freeway. In Northern California, you wouldn't do that. Um, little things like this are obvious to people who know the language and sort of know how the different regions operate. But for people who don't know, um, it's just English, right? So Aramaic's a lot like that. Aramaic, the more you know, the more you can kind of get the sense of where someone's from. Um, you know, what's the rhythm of the language um, as they use it? And these are mostly features of Neo-Aramaic. Neo-Aramaic, you know, the, what was really cool up until recently is that um, there's a lot of dialect preservation among different villages. And, you know, maybe that's its own video for us. Um, Neo-Aramaic, you, you can, and in Syria, you could walk along the Khabur River to different villages and hear different dialects of Aramaic being spoken. People could understand each other, but they're no, okay, he's from Tel Tama. Okay, he's from Tel Jama. Okay, he's from Tel Nasri, right? Like you'll know where the people are from based on their accent. And, um, you know, you still understand each other, right? And, okay, so Aramaic's like that when it comes to its spoken varieties, but then that also impacts the different spelling conventions um depending on where someone's from and sometimes you know they um are closer than than they would be otherwise it's a uh, all right let's just move on aramaic is a complex collection of various dialects the aramaic that jesus spoke wasn't like the aramaic that the jews in iraq would speak the aramaic of biblical times is not like aramaic of the talmud and that the Aramaic of the Babylonian Talmud is not like the Aramaic of the Jerusalem Talmud, he said, referring to the two Talmudic corpora, one compiled in Iraq, the other compiled in the land of Israel. Both Talmuds are based on the Mishnah, the Jewish oral law, which was written down in Hebrew and compiled around 200 CE by Rabbi Yuda Hanasi. Sections of the Mishnah were later debated and expounded upon in the great rabbinical academies. And eventually the two Talmuds were compiled in Aramaic uh, from the discussions, the Babylonian around 500 CE, the Jerusalem, uh, perhaps a hundred years before that. I mean, I think it goes without saying that, you know, the, the Aramaic that Jesus spoke would be different than the Aramaic that other people spoke who weren't from his village. You know, and people make a, a, a big deal of that. Um, mostly because I think they're aiming for achieving an authentic replication of, let's say, a Galilean Aramaic. But in the end, Aramaic is Aramaic. And the, the more you know it, the more you can understand. So people can probably distinguish him. And they could. I mean, the New Testament um, cites as much. When people heard Peter talk, uh, they could hear his accent. So you can do the same thing that, you know, I just described with the Neo-Aramaic dialects. You could basically figure out where someone's from. It's it's like that with Arabic too, right? Like if Arabic in across the Middle East, um, it's obvious where someone's from, you know, depending on the way they speak, the word choice they use. I mean, and it's not just like country versus country. Sure, Egypt, uh, Lebanon, you know, Palestine, Jordan, Syria. But like you go into Syria, you know where people are from. Just by how they talk, you can tell if they're from Damascus or Aleppo or if they're from Latakia um, up on the northwestern coastal area. If they're from Jazeera, you know, they're going to talk a certain way. And um, same with Iraq, you can tell where people are from just by their accent of Aramaic. So I'm sorry, their accent of Arabic. So there's a lot of um, things that are obvious to language speakers that may not be obvious to us even in an English language environment because we're not kind of faced with these questions, right? Um, you know someone's from New York or Brooklyn, right, when they're speaking English. Um, you may not know if they're from Brooklyn or New Jersey if you don't live around the area. You may hear something that sounds the same. Um, and God forbid you confuse it with a New Englander accent because that's it's a different accent. You know, you need to know. But we don't. And, um, you know, we're around people enough that we don't really make a conscious 
discussion of that, um, even though it's sort of embedded within us. We know someone's from New York, but we don't really think of it. Ah, oh, okay, well, I can spell the New York word this way. Coffee um, could be C-W-O-F-E-E, coffee. Um, do we spell it like that? No, we don't. We spell it C-O-F-F-E-E, -E, coffee, but it's the same language. So anyway, I, I think the article is mildly interesting. You can go ahead and read it, you know, just talking about the machine learning is uh, having machine compare the language of the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud was the key to confirming the rabbi's labeling of special tactics in the Babylonian. Um, okay. I mean, do you need the machine learning to confirm that if you can read it and you know it? I don't know. Um, maybe there's something, you know, maybe some of you computer science folks out there can think of some other creative ways that, um, you know, we can use our machine learning tools to um, figure out things we, we may not know the questions to even ask, right? I would think rather than just recognizing dialect in text, which is really just recognizing spellings, that's all, like if it's textual, it's spelling, maybe it's word choice, right? Um, we've talked about it before, you know, if I want to say Aloha Mbarek in Western Syriac, I could say Aloha Nateruk in, in Eastern modern Syriac. They both have the, the impact of God bless you. The Western one is literally God bless you. The Eastern one is God keep you. Okay. So we could then, if it's not spelling, maybe it's word choice, right? Like how does a community choose to um, say things like that? Do we say Aloham Hasele? Do we say Aloham Menechle? Like there's all sorts of different things that it's the same language, but, you know, maybe we're choosing to express ourselves with a different set of vocabulary um, in our expression of that language. And then from that, we can say, okay, that's from this region or that's from that region. I think where machines could be really interesting is more on the high spectral level of manuscripts, right? And um, looking at handwriting. Um, handwriting can, can maybe like help us figure out, especially there's colophones where a person puts a signature of, um, you know, what their name is and when they um, wrote the manuscript down to track and trace different hands at work in and across manuscripts. That would be really interesting because um, all we're doing is we're analyzing visuals, right? And the visuals, either letters, spellings, word choice, the shapes of letters. Maybe we, you know, we look at the types of, um, you know, uh, medium used, maybe the type of goat skin you do, um, DNA analysis on it to know, okay, these goats were killed from this time period to this time period. They were treated here. And that gives us, you know, at least a, a start date of when the manuscript could have been written, right? Uh, I don't know if uh, carbon dating and DNA, you know, let us know it's from this flock at, at this field. Who knows? You guys out there, you the brainiacs, um, go ahead and give us some feedback and let us know how, you know, different machine learning might be useful for languages and language history. Um, what are the things we don't know? What questions are we not asking? That's what I'm interested in. As for Aramaic, um, I saw this and, you know, I, I haven't put out content in a while. So I thought, hey, let's talk about Aramaic dialects. Thanks again. Do all the algorithmic duties. Uh, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and uh, comment. You know, let me know what you think. And if there's other articles that you think are worth talking about or you'd like to see uh, me comment on. Thank <laughs> you.